You basically, uh, you know, cite some heightened market volatility for banks. Is this a good thing because they can actually take advantage of it, or is it the bad kind of volatility that, that you know, banks could really struggle with? Well, good morning. Thank you for having me. First of all, as you said, volatility sometimes can be good for institutions because at the end, the volatility, particularly often trading and market making activities, they can actually benefit from the movements of markets. But the volatility at this stage that we're more concerned about is the signaling, obviously, enhanced uncertainty on the macro environment given the geopolitical situation. And that uncertainty, depending how it right. develops over time, it might become higher risk, and that's a concern for the European banks. So, uh, you know, Chairman Campbell, what parts in the financial system are you worried about? I know there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of, you know, calls or chatter about margin calls, for example, having to be put on, on some of the commodity traders. Is this where the fault line is? Well, it's certainly, let's start where, where the risks are not. You know, direct exposures to Russia by the European banks is small. So in that sense, you know, our concern there is very limited. We estimate there's only 0.3% of total assets that are direct exposures to Russian counterparties. So that's not really a concern. As you mentioned, now in the short term, of course, excess, excess volatility and some of the margin calls that are being derived from that in commodity markets, both in some of the, of the basic commodities, also in food prices and food commodities, it's an area of concern. We have seen margins increasing so far. I think that the margin costs have been able to be met very pro very properly, but of course, it's not just for banks to the margin calls. It's also non-financial corporates that are involved in some of these markets, and they may be challenges with liquidity, and that's an indirect effect that we are carefully watching. But, uh, Mr. Kapp, when you say challenges with liquidity, I mean, uh, to a point where something systemic could happen, or have banks been, you know, pretty careful with these kinds of lending? No, clearly not. At this stage, we don't think there's any systemic concerns uh, arising from this. We think well, markets are working properly, margin calls are being attended by those that are being requested to increase their collaterals, and I think that the both banks and non-financial corporates that participate in these markets have sufficient liquidity to be able to accept those calls. So I don't see any area for systemic risk, but nevertheless, we need to remain watchful. Uh, Mr. Kavi, you're talking about inflation. Will it lead to banks having losses because households may not be able to repay some of the loans or some of the mortgages? Or, you know, at the margins, can they also benefit from inflation if interest rates rise? You're absolutely right. Inflation has uh, two sides for banks. You know, if, if inflation materializes in higher interest rates, and there may be the likelihood that higher interest rates will rise both from the monetary part but also on, on the market, that's good for net interest income of banks. But of course, the overall, it's not just inflation, but the overall macro environment. The macro environment deteriorates, and that results in a difficulty for borrowers on making good on their payments and increases in non performing loans on banks. That's negative news. That's why we say in our risk assessment that although the direct, the direct effects that we see from the crisis are small and manageable, we remain concerned about second round effects and more macro uncertainty that may end up in a deteriorating macroeconomic outlook that then will affect uh, banks' profitability as well. Right. So you're not expecting some kind of, you, you know, big loan losses. And if you were, are, are there banks, you know, where are the banks most vulnerable? I know the Italian banks are, have quite a lot of exposure, uh, for example, to Russian commodities. Some of the, the German banks have also been highlighted. Yes, if I, if I may highlight, I mean, the starting position of the banks is, is very solid at this stage, both on capital ratios and liquidity ratios. Also, we we're already expecting an increase on non-performing loans as uh, so the last leg of the of coming out of the COVID crisis, as we saw some of the measures, particularly the government guarantees and moratoria expiring, we were expecting some non-performing loans to increase, which up until now had not materialized. So on top of that, now we need to add concerns about the new macroeconomic situation and the geopolitical concerns. So as you say, I would say that both uh, those banks that have been more affected by COVID uh, impacts in the, in, in the countries where COVID was more hit, Plus now, those that are more affected by Russia, the ones that are more likely to be hit. It depends on business models, but geographies, as you say, you know, uh, southern, southern countries in general are more affected by COVID. Also, some of the countries more closer yeah. to, to, east, to trade relations with Eastern Europe more affected. Those are the ones that are more likely to have the biggest hit.
Mr. Yeah, and Mr. Campbell, when you look at you know how a lot of the banks are dealing with Russia, are they, are they going further, maybe even too much further, against you know not against the sanctions, but so they're trying to deal with sanctioned individuals, but are they taking a step further and maybe sanctioning all Russians? Is this a concern? Like, are they going you know above and beyond the sanctions? Well, I think at this stage, banks are, are very eager to implement the sanctions properly. And these were very, as, as you know, a, a very broad range sense, sense of sanctions that were uh, decided very decisively and very quickly. So banks are trying to figure out how to implement them properly or not on all its areas of relevance. I think that uh, you're absolutely right that as, as they move in this, they're probably more cautious than not in the sense that they, they, they want to make sure they have swift implementation of the sanctions and that may end up uh, yeah. excluding some of their activities. Also, it's also true that you know, uh, some of banks are decreasing their risk appetite to Russian exposures or Russian-related exposures.